Computers are different from humans. Now you go, well, that's easy to tell. But one thing about humans is when we speak, we can't speak that quickly. And in digital terms, the bandwidth of our speaking is about, well, 64,000 bits per second. And if you encode that, you can encode all kinds of human speech and everyone will hear everyone else. But computers aren't like that. They can speak at any speed, slow or fast. And the way computer networks work is that the speed that these computers talk at adapts. It's almost like driving your car down the road without any kind of speed limit. If there's empty space ahead of you, you go faster. If there's a vehicle right in front, you go slower. And what we're interested in and have been for a couple of decades now is the way in which we adapt to that speed. Now, we used to do what we call loss-based congestion. And if I could go back to the car analogy, it works like the following. Keep on going faster and faster until you crash into the car in front. You're going too fast. Back off and try again. So what you're actually doing is pushing the network faster and faster until you consume all of the network's resources and you start dropping packets. It just can't take any more packets. That's a signal to back off and you do it again. Now we've been doing this for about 30 odd years, but in some ways it's kind of crude that what these computers try and do is to push the network over the edge and then just sort of go back going, whoa, that was a bit fast and do it again. Is there a better way? Now, this was the sort of the question that prompted a number of folk within Google to think about how you could do it differently. And this is a new uh, flow control algorithm that goes, the first thing that happens when I go a bit too fast is that I start to queue the packets up in a buffer, but that creates delay. So what if I very carefully measure the delay between me and the person I'm talking to? And when the delay starts to increase, I'm kind of going a bit fast, back off a little bit, and I'll just be at that sweet spot of going as fast as the network will let me go without accumulating the potential for damage. BBR in a nutshell. But implementation and desire often get confused. And the way BBR has been implemented is actually a little bit different. What it does is it estimates how much capacity is in the network and then shuts its eyes and sends at that capacity for six round trip times, irrespective of loss, irrespective of anything. For the next round trip time, it goes 25% faster and for the next 25% slower. And if it sees the delay, a variation in the delay, it'll adjust. Again, this sounds good. But then what happens when we observe this across the real network? And across the real network, that period when BBR operates blind becomes a real interesting issue because it just doesn't care what everyone else is doing. The way we share the network is we all run the same flow control protocol. But when someone becomes the black sheep and runs an entirely different flow control protocol, one of two things happens. It either gets squashed out of existence because everyone else just overwhelms it, or it squashes everyone else out of existence. And fascinatingly, with this first release of BBR, it's the bulldozer in amongst a field of rather small mice. And it literally just pushes everyone else out. And there's some kind of fascinating uh, plots that I did of testing out BBR across the entire world, from Australia into Germany, from Germany across into America, contrasting a normal congestion-based algorithm, Cubic is the current one of Vogue, against BBR. And in every case, BBR sort of takes over. Now, you kind of go, well, maybe we shouldn't use BBR. It's just too aggressive. But there's a germ of real truth inside what BBR is trying to do. As we try and make faster and faster networks, we can't keep on adding to the buffer space. We can't keep on provisioning high-speed routers with buffer space equal to the delay bandwidth product. It doesn't work anymore. We're going to have to figure out how to go fast with short buffers in silicon. And this is where BBR offers us 
a whole new way of looking at extremely high speed networking. And not just networking in the data center, but networking around all the internet. There's a new release coming, BBR 2.0. Can't wait to get my hands on it. This stuff is fascinating. It's a sort of a breath of a new way of thinking about TCP that we haven't had for almost 20 years.